Hello everyone, how was your week? Just good like mine? That's brilliant. Brilliant like a bulb. Remember we covered how bulbs actually represent brilliance and light bulb moments? Well, today we are here to continue that concept and dive deeper into light too. So, shall we get on with what I promised you in the last lesson? We'll be looking at some objects that are transparent, translucent, or what? Transparent, translucent? Transparent, transpa transparent, translucent, opaque, and what's the last one? I don't know. You tell me. Or should we just go ahead and learn it? Okay, I've just mentioned three types of material and one I've left it out for you to find out as we move along. Well, we have four types of materials that allow light to pass through. One, it does not allow light to pass through. The other, it allows all the light to pass through. And the next one, it allows some light to pass through and not the rest of the light. And one really reflects all the light that comes to it. Reflection. That sounds like a mirror to me. Hmm. So that's the first one. A material that reflects light. Two examples like a mirror and any shiny surface that does a lot of reflection. So light bounces off. Allows light, all light to pass through them. That should be transparent material like clear glass or clear plastic and so on. The next one says allows only some light and not the rest. That should be translucent maybe? Yeah. So it's like tracing paper, thin cloth and even thin paper, which is tracing paper actually. And the last one does not allow any light to go through, like a wall, a wooden door. You cannot see light from the other side of the room, right? You could have one dark room and one bright room. Light doesn't pass through walls, so these block out all the light. So depending on your use, you can choose any one of these objects for your personal use or any experiment or for any particular use. So I just wanted to show you how actually light travels into or outside of these objects in terms of what? Drawing, arrows, okay? So this is the first category, reflected. So maybe examples will be mirror and shiny surfaces. So all the light that comes in bounces off and does not get through this material. What do you, mind, what do you mean by get through? This is get through. So the light actually can pass right through the material. Example, glass, clear glass, clear plastic, plastic sheets, Anything that is transparent is transparent because the light passes through completely. And that's the representing diagram. This, well, light comes but doesn't get through. It's absorbed. It doesn't even get reflected. Look at this. At least it goes somewhere. And here, at least it's going past through it somewhere too. There, nowhere. It says, bye bye light, I take all of you and thank you very much. It's as though it ate it up. Okay, so that's called absorb. The light does not go anywhere else but into the material and that's it. So those are, I think, representative of opaque material. Okay, last one would be, what do you think? Looking at this, you have reflected, absorbed, transmitted, nothing else, right? Is there anything you can draw for me? Maybe quicker? Quick draw of a um, diagram on your paper. Show me what you think will be the last one I'll be covering. Hmm, a little bit of everything actually. So it will look like this. Okay, so it's got reflection, it's got absorption, and it's also got transmission. So all three happening in the same material. So at the other side, when you look at it, you can actually see what? some light the rest of it is absorbed okay maybe not so much of reflection because here okay i want you to pay close attention to this one reflection will only occur if this part here is a shiny surface or a mirror okay otherwise we just stick to these two okay 
So just to be clear, but I put them all three because it could be a combination of the top two ticks or the bottom. Okay, so well, we just want to study how the light passes through these materials. So if I take the green out one out, it's fine too. Okay, a combination so it will look like this. It's reflected, transmitted, or absorbed. So it's all actually, it could be any one of these. Reflected and here maybe you can say and absorb, and here you can say reflected all. So any th these three can happen. So when we started this lesson, what are the names we give these materials? Remember? This is the characteristic that is getting reflected, transmitted, absorbed, and a combination. But what kind of material do we call these blocks? Remember, we did mention three but left one out. So transparent, translucent, opaque, and the first one, this one, reflection, okay, reflective. So this is the material names. If you have such a material, it's called reflective. If it's this material, it's called transparent material, then opaque material, and the last one is translucent. So some light goes in and out. So you need to be familiar with these terms. So I think this um, slide is quite important. It shows you the diagrams on how light travels and also shows you the names of the materials. Okay. Just take note that translucent actually means maybe some of it is transmitted and some of it is absorbed. Okay. Not really reflective. Okay. I just put it there to show that they are a combination of three, but maybe I'm not so correct in writing reflected there. Like I said, light only gets reflected in a case where the material is of mirror surface or shiny surface. As long as you remember that, you are fine and good to go. Okay? Does light pass through all materials then? Remember this? We saw this at the start of the diagram. So we can go back to this now. So these are reflective materials these are transparent materials or object since the heading is object these are translucent objects remember how to spell translucent please the last four letters are c e n t scent which has come from the word dollars and cent, so C E N T. Okay, and the last one does not allow, should be objects like these are called opaque. Okay, so we consolidate the earlier slides in this slide again and we learn four names. How does light fall on a surface? Most of the time they are smooth, then it's a smooth reflection or a smooth absorption or a transparent material will just let light through pass it straight but how about when it's a rough surface you see light falls off in all kinds of haphazard directions so depends on the surface it will move in different directions so you do not really have a very smooth reflection so when it's a very smooth surface you're going to get good reflection and that's why mirrors reflect very well because they are ultra smooth whereas other materials like wood they're quite rough paper is rough as well not very smooth so the smoother you can make it the and shinier you can make it then the more reflective they are so this is a very good reflector so done by smooth as well as shiny surfaces like a mirror okay and most other objects are usually rough the roughness is actually exaggerated here but actually even a little bit roughness even paper is rough okay grace conducted well it's exercise time then okay let's look at this question and then we will find out some more things that we want to learn from this chapter so we did this before. Place an object and then you use a torch and then you shine the torch onto the object and you try to see something on the wall. Maybe a shadow will form. Okay. Shadows are actually going to be touched on later. But let's look at this question first. 
So she recorded the results. She changed three objects, X, Y, and Z. And as X did not allow any light, Y allowed some light, and Z allowed all the light through it. So Z is transparent material. Y is translucent material. And X is, does not allow, so opaque material. There's no reflection here, so there are no mirrors here. Okay? Based on the results, which one of the following statement is true? Well, let's read one by one, right? That's the way we do it. Object Y forms a lighter shadow than object X. Well, which one will form the strongest shadow? The one that blocks the most of the light, right? Like wood. It completely blocks the light. So the shadow will be a strong dark one. So let's put here lighter and darker. So this one will be darker, right? This one will be lighter. Or lightest. Or no shadow. Or maybe this is lighter. And then this one is, let's, let's try this way. No shadow, maybe. Because it's totally transparent, so no shadow. Is that better? So let me use some colors to actually let you see it better. This is lighter. And this is darker. Okay, better? So now we can have all the information and then we look at the answers again. Object Y forms a lighter shadow. Object Y is here. Then object X. Yes, it's true. Object X forms a lighter shadow than object Y. No. Object Z forms object Z forms a darker. No, it's the lightest or there should be no shadow at all. No. Object Z forms a darker shadow than object No. These guys here don't form any shadows at all. So the, the moment they keep saying object X forms a shadow, object X forms a shadow or a darker shadow, it's not. Because this side is lighter, this side is darker, only A is the answer. Okay? Good that you guys managed to answer with me this question on shadows because that's what we're going to cover in the next lesson. Okay? So it's like an intro. The diagram below shows how Joshua sees the tree. Wow, this is easy. We covered this as a fundamental lesson in light one, last lesson, right? The what from the sun is what by the tree and enters Joshua's eyes. Okay. The light from the sun is reflected by the tree and enters Joshua's eyes. Okay. The light is reflected by the tree and enters Joshua's eye, okay? The diagram below shows light sensor, okay? What's a light sensor? Let me unline it. To count the number of wooden boxes, okay? So you see a light source and then a light sensor. So light is shining straight to the light sensor and then this light sensor is able to read oh there's light coming in and it says oh there's a lot of light say uh, 10 10 units of light is coming in and then this moving belt moves the wooden box and when this box comes into this position okay Let me draw so you could see it clearly with red. So, so give me a give me a minute. So this is what happens, right? In a while, this box will have come here. What's going to happen? The light is going to be blocked, right? This box blocks the light. Therefore, this guy sensor says, "Hey, what happened to the light? I can't." detect any light. Zero, right? The reading is zero. 
So every time a box comes and blocks it, the reading is zero. Get it? So we can count how many boxes there are because every time the reading goes to a zero, there's no light, that's one box. Then the next box comes and then zero again, two box. Simple? Okay, so this data light sensor was recorded and there it shows the units, a brightness and zero. So here, all of you pay attention here. So initially the box was not blocking, right? So there was a high reading. So how many units was this? Say 10, just for example. And then suddenly it dropped to zero. This part is zero. Okay? And then it goes up to 10 again. So when it's zero, means there's a box blocking. So we say, hey, there's one box blocking the light. Every time there's a zero. So how many zeros are there? So based on the graph, how many wooden boxes pass the sensor in 18 seconds? 18 is here, right? So how many? So how many zeros are there? One, two, three, four. So this is a box, this is a box, and this is a box. In 18 seconds, four boxes have passed the light. So answer should be four. Okay? Simple yet interesting and yet exciting and yet brilliant and yet... I love this sort of questions because it makes me think and you guys should be too because it's really out of the norm. It's really giving you some experimental knowledge on light, how light is used. You see, this could be used in a factory to count the number of boxes very quickly, automatically, without you having to count them one by one because the numbers could be hundreds and hundreds or thousands of boxes, right? Imagine how many boxes of chocolates are made and sent to all the supermarkets in the world. And you want to count the boxes so you could charge the supermarket and say, we have sent you 10,000 boxes. So they need a counter like this to make use of light sensors to be able to help them to count automatically so that you don't have to do it. Right.